Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Michael, a.k.a. Rickshaw, and welcome to Worship in Tribute Nerd. Today we have a very special guest, Courtney LaPlante. Say hello. It's me. It's me, Courtney. You remember me. <laughs> I was another one that was in Iwabo. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, it's a shame that, you know, for me to get my little YouTube project off the ground, I just have to call up my old vocalists, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At least you only have two. Right. Some bands have like five old vocalists. Yeah, like like Dance Gavin Dance or something. Yeah, they're like, they make me so mad because you're supposed to get more shot as you get different vocalists but they just got a bunch of really good vocalists I, and the I know. band became more popular i mean <laughs> honestly it works. like the whole like just lifetime of that band's career is just me going oh man they got a new book damn i like this way better yeah. oh I damn know. they got another new book oh i like this way better <laughs> i know honestly it's insulting <laughs> You're supposed to get worse, and everyone is supposed to turn on you. Will Spawn, <laughs> that's how it works. Yeah. I think it's just because they all, all their songs are really good, and, well, you know, yeah. they're right. all freaks, and they all sound good, so they right. can all suck my ass. They're too perfect <laughs> for singing. There's got to be something wrong with them. Anyways, uh, let's talk about Spirit Box for a little bit. Tell me a little bit about Spirit Box. Well... We all put in our two weeks notice at Iwavo. <laughs> we, uh, we were like, what the fuck are we going to do now? And uh, yeah, Michael and I have been really obsessed with this for like going on three years now and about like almost two years of being a band like on paper in the real world. But like three years, almost, man, almost four actually of us just given every, you know, given everything including all of the love and devotion of our marriage into the band mm -hmm. and michael is was also an iwabo for those of you watching and you know so and i call ricky ricky so this guy his name's mike yeah rick shaw ricky we, we could I'll, I'll make a a rundown of my That's of my nicknames it's, it's not my fault that every person in my band was named mike it so we called my husband Young Michael. That's what I was saying. Uh, you know, I've I've had a few videos so far on my YouTube, and I've definitely explained the rules of nickname making. Okay, you know, and and Iwaba was t what taught me everything I know. You know, if you got a Michael, if you got more than one Michael, you gotta you gotta make a difference. You know, it's like and if you're you know if you're young, then Young's always a good one. You know, or if you're a Mikey. If, yeah, you're, Mike. if, if you're a Mikey, you're always going to stay a Mikey, but then you got to add words to, diff, you know, to div, 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 differentiate. Yeah. <laughs> the, and I just find it really funny when everyone's like, you got to be, you got to be kidding me. They're all <laughs> named Mike. And I'm like, yeah, the most popular name in the United States for the last 50 years. Yes. Right. Yeah. Most people in my band were named Mike. That's a... Uh, that's one of the main things being in a band that's ever that's like annoyed me the most. It's yeah, there's a stigma that comes with it, and it's the stigma of people going, "You gotta be kidding me!" You gotta you be got, kidding. Or, or what's the name of your band? Who oh, I have to ask? Who won? <laughs> oh, God. People still say that to me. We left Iwaba four years ago, and you know what? Oh, you know what? I hate to be so negative, but I don't actually. I love to be <laughs> negative. It's what, my, what really gets me going. Right. And the thing that makes me the most mad is when someone acts so concerned that they just stumbled upon. Like, they just went, hmm, I wonder what's going on with that band Iwabo. And they, they go online and they don't see anything. They're like, what's happened to Iwabo? And I'm like, <laughs> we, we haven't done anything in four years. Like, there's there's children that were born at the same time that are walking around like talking and asking mom to make them sandwiches. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, and it's and the I'm most, scared. It's, it, and the funny thing is like, even, even what Krista was telling me, it's like, she's like, Hey, what's up everybody. I have a new band. Here's my new I band. Iwabo? Is this Iwabo? Are you back in Iwabo? It's like, what is going on? And everyone, in all those people's offenses, one thing that, including Krista, what our band has always done is just 
be like, let's just not say anything about it. <laughs> and then we'll eventually just, people won't ask us. But it kind of makes things more annoying because, you know, like if I could go back in time and be your P, like our PR guy, I would be like, you know what you should do, Krista? You should come out with a press release being like, I think it's fucked up that you guys are all mad at me for leaving to be a good mom. But you're not telling all these men who are who are like they're running around. They're getting to be go on tour and dump their kids at home. And <laughs> everyone's like, cool. Yeah. But for her, can you imagine if she like left her kid at home and came back? They'd yeah. be like, and my mat leave assignment was over. And then she came back. Oh, I, I, the one thing I remember reading that I thought was hilarious was like people were like, outraged like young, even young girls that were out, they were like outraged and they were like i know for a fact that all of you guys are rich and if krista wanted to be in the band she definitely could have her own bus and go and on to her and it's like what <laughs> like i can't even ride the bus because i don't have any change in my pocket <laughs> yeah, but you know what i think just the way that we all were in Iwabo, I don't think that we were like actually secretive, but we just weren't as involved in social media. Right. I feel like just from my perspective, I wasn't as involved with social media, connecting with people online right. and being able to like represent the band online as myself. But in my, in spirit box, like it's, it's actually like, very refreshing because we just are so straight up with everyone. And I think other bands, like they, they want to look cool and mm -hmm. they want to pretend that they're really like saying, no, 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 we're broke. And like, we don't, we don't make any money from our band makes them look bad. Mm -hmm. But me and Michael are like, we're broke. This is how it is. We're all broke. Everyone, yeah. all these idiots don't have a job when they get home. And if they don't have a job, they live with their parents and they're really sad because they're poor. Here's an interesting fact. The other day, me and young Michael, Courtney's husband in Spirit Box, we did a video and it lasted for about an hour. And then I realized I screwed it all up. That's so sad. <laughs> that he did tell me that it, he said that you guys had did such a good job and it was really funny. Yeah. Maybe and, it was meant to be that no one ever <laughs> sees it. <laughs> well, I was like, I was like straight up like five minutes after we got done. I was like, well, um, yeah, I screwed it up. Yeah. We're, let's just, we'll wait a month to save up some things to talk about again and then we'll try it again. So yeah, it's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. So, uh, you guys playing any more shows than just those couple uh, Misery Signal shows? I think we're going to play a show in the end of December mm -hmm. in Vancouver, but it hasn't been like confirmed for sure yet. Mm -hmm. um, I hope so. That would be really fun. Um, but yeah, other than that, we're just kind of like being like, okay, remember for the last two years, like we haven't gotten our shit together and it would have been really hard to tour. Yeah. Well, now we have our shit together. So if someone wants to just take us out on tour, that would be great. So we're trying. <laughs> you know, easier yeah. said than I mean, so and, and that's and going back to what we were just talking about. It's like nowadays it's like really hard, especially if you're like past the age of 25 in our society. Like it's hard to just go, I'm going to risk everything to go on tour. And then even if you risked everything, you, you risk your job, you risk, you know, like the, the, the fact that you might not be able to pay rent, whatever. And then you go on tour in our day and age, there's no guarantee that you're ever even going to get anything out of that. Like you might go on tour and gain like 15 fans and that's it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, and most people have generally, if they're in a relationship, well, at least their significant other is at home working. Right. Mine's in the band with me. We're <laughs> down together. We're both, we're both, you know, the sinking ship is going down. We're we're chained to the ship. There's no one at home. I mean, join a cult. You know those guys. I I I hear that they like to take care of each other in a cult. You know what I mean? Oh, I love, I love cults. <laughs> Big fan. I love, I love true crime podcasts and a lot of like. There's a lot of like cult stuff that blends in with. 
true crime stuff. They go hand in hand. It's just, just so interesting. All right, we're gonna we're gonna move on to the next part. But you know, good luck in Spirit Box, and I hope that you guys get big and take me on tour with you, and I could work for you and travel with you and have fun. All you'll do is just stand there while we're setting up drums and stuff, and be like, you know, when I was your age doing this, that drum <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You little idiots are just doing it all yourselves. When I was your age, uh, this place, yeah, you know, it was a lot bigger. You know, when I was your age, we had a drum tech, and that's what we spilled our, all of our money into, and that's why <laughs> <Yeah>. I'm broke now. <laughs> <laughs> and lights that I don't own personally. I know. <laughs> yeah, have, I have two microphones. <laughs> But they say I wobble on them, so I can't sell them because no one wants them. Oh, damn. Well, if they didn't say anything on them, then at least someone could be like, oh, I could use this for my band. But who wants to buy a laser? <laughs> I can only imagine that, like, you know, that uh, Craigslist post where someone is like, yeah, I want to come check it out. Yeah, that's the exact mic that I was looking at. Oh, wait. It says what on it? Your name is laser engraved <laughs> on it? Cool. Well, I'm going to just let this one pass. <laughs> It's okay. I they're such good microphones. I still use them, and I just I just put black duct tape around the. Around the <laughs> nice. I'm frugal. All right. Mo- so moving on to some nerdy stuff. So uh, you like so you like true crime and you like crime stuff, huh? Yeah. I love I love true crime. I think that's there's been a really big resurgence in true crime podcasts and that kind of stuff uh and especially amongst female listeners it's been like the, it's just blown up even more i'd say like in the last like four years it's just been like an upward tick of it becoming like and i obviously it's always been popular well i, rem- I remember when you know like 10 years ago or maybe 15 years ago it started being like all like all the girls that i knew were like CSI. I'm gonna fucking make it home watch CSI. Oh what? shit. You know what I mean? And I'm like and I think I think that. stemming from there, it's like Law and sp- Order, SPU. Right, right. And it's like stemming from all that, it's like sparked this whole like uh, I like, you know, documentaries about you know, murders and like solving c- crimes and like the bo- I think it's cuz we're all secretly scared that someone's going to murder us and rape us, so it's like those are like our worst fears mm-hmm. and that are like kind of not so far fetched. Right. We're always having to think about like defending ourselves and mm-hmm. just stuff that you guys don't think about as much. You do, you still do. Like, you know, if you're walking down the street in the dark by yourself, you're like creeped out. Right. But like, we're like way more, um, you know, intense, nor like from our day to day. And I think a lot of those true crime podcasts, it's like we learn to not put yourself in that it. situation. And we learn to, and we're like, empha- we're, we can emphasize with the victim because we've like all been in that, that weird situation. And then I guess also just the, it's so morbid, the ones that like, it wasn't like a, you know, a, their boyfriend or whatever. It's like just a stranger, like someone just walked into their house. Like, I think, I don't know. I think that's why a lot of people are fascinated by that stuff anyway, but like, especially women, I think it's like kind of uh, it's just a way to like have someone help you explore why that you're so scared of that right because it's just scared of all the time so um do you watch mind hunter i watched the first season of it the the new season just came out no i I haven't watched that um oh it's so good who's the do they have another famous serial killer in the second season right they have a few more they have son of sam and then they have marilyn or not marilyn manson charles manson (laughs) and Um, and you know an interesting fact did you watch the movie uh once upon a time in hollywood i haven't seen it yet okay do you know what that movie is about at all yeah like sharon tate and and right so like the guy they, there's only one, like one quick little scene where like the guy that's supposed to be Charles Manson is in that movie, and it's the same Charles Manson as in uh, Mindhunter. So yeah, well, you know, the reason I I re- kind of remembered that is because I saw like on online people being like, "Look at this dude; he's like a dead ringer for right Charles Manson." So oh, oh his, I, his scene love- his scene in Mindhunter is really good too. He's just like insane, but smart. I love the first. <laughs> 
Gein with the guy that's Ed Gein, that actor. Ed Gein, that's the best one of the whole show. Like, even watching season two I and everything. Like, yeah. <clears throat> he was in Umbrella Academy, if you watched that show. Oh, I haven't watched any, like, any superhero-y shows in a long time. I haven't seen any of the new Avengers or anything. Oh, this... I watched Black Panther last year. But... <laughs> right, that was a good one. I like that yeah, one. Good. If But you haven't watched Infinity War and Endgame? No. Oh, those are the most incredible movies that you'll ever watch. Like, just because it's, like, part 22 and 20, you know, 21 of a series. Like, it's insane. So... I know that everyone likes it so much. I'm aware of all like the pop culture references that are, have been a huge impact on pop culture for like the last two years from those movies. Mm -hmm. But I just feel like I'd appreciate it more if I watched more of that universe's movies. If the, if, I don't know. Yeah, so yeah. I just, no, like oh. if if you are, you know, if you're just like, well, another one came out and I'm still not caught up. Yeah, I, I get it, everyone then I understand, like, you should start from the beginning. You should take your time. You know what I mean? There's so many. There's 22 of them, so it's like, and there's they're always going to be there. All, but I would just like to, I just feel like there's probably, like, a bunch of little inside jokes and stuff in there between all the characters, and if I had watched, like, if I had watched Thor or watched any of those movies, I'd probably get it more. But the only ones I've seen are, like, Guardians of the Galaxy and Iron Man. Like, right. I, don't, I just, I'm not into watching superhero movies really <laughs> I, I just i get you but if you if but you, i like a good movie good movies no, a good movie. they are they are good movies okay but anyways <laughs> yeah because i do want to i do want to watch them i'm just you know i'm i don't i don't mean to act like i'm like oh i don't really watch a lot of tv because i do i still like consume a lot of media i just more like i spend more time on like youtube Mm -hmm. and and that more so than like tv shows and movies right now mm -hmm. i've been watching a lot of movies which is weird but i guess i'm used to like being on tour and having eight hours to kill every night in my bunk <laughs> right so i just watch so many movies and I, I don't as much now i mean and and if you enjoy the youtube community too like when you when you're following something like the marvel movies like this ongoing thing it's like the youtube community is really big about that right now too because there's like such room for like prediction predicting what's going to happen next or you know what i mean like the the movie politics on top of i remember that. when you did yours uh, you know it was that was like one of my first videos so it wasn't it wasn't that great but. i don't want to know if you're right or not because <laughs> then that would be right so uh what what else you what else are you into right now the things that i obsess over are podcasts like predominantly true crime podcasts like i loved um this one called last podcast on the left oh yeah i've heard about that you i don't know if you'd like it i love it it's like if you got a bunch of like weird like comedian like slash improv slash like actor kids that like all sat in the cafeteria at lunch or like ate lunch with the teachers mm -hmm. like if you took all those kids but then they were all 35 and they were all really funny and then just talked about horrible murders, <laughs> really horrible, lighthearted jokes about murdering. And it's very funny. Um, it's been on for like seven years or something. So it's I feel like it's gotten a lot better mm -hmm. over time. But I don't know. I think you might like it. I, I probably would. I like the I, I like I like listening to podcasts, but I just don't. I don't know where to look for certain ones. You know what I mean? Like I haven't yeah. been, I haven't, I just now became a part of the podcast, like community really. Like, so I don't, I don't know where to look. I don't know what I, I just, I, love I just genuinely think that hearing conversations between people that know each other or are at good at good at conversation is just like, no matter what the subject is like pretty enthralling. Like you could get lost in just like hearing people talk about stuff like all night. So that's why I love, commentary type podcasts mm -hmm. more so than like like a normal interviewing format of like like a joe rogan format mm -hmm. where someone just comes on who's like an expert in something gen like generally it's not a comedian or something it's like a doctor mm -hmm. for like cell research 
which I like, but I like the I like the commentary ones where they're telling a story and the story is continuing to to progress throughout the podcast. But then it's like they have you know, it's kind of like all right and freeze and then like it's like if you're watching a movie with your friends and then you you press pause and then start like talking shit about it and right. for a second. Yeah. <clears throat> and stuff. So I like that one. I like my favorite murder. I used to like Sword and Scale, but then like the guy who's the host of it, he turned out to be like this weird creepy guy who like there's there's a bunch of YouTube videos on it. It's really crazy, but so I don't like that guy anymore. Um <laughs> He's canceled. Um, <laughs> and uh, I really like, I listen to the Daily, it's the New York Times one every day. It's really, but it's not like boring, just like current event stuff. It's really cool stories. Um, and I'm listening to one right now about this dude that um, like killed his whole family. But the reason why this is such a strange podcast, it's called Cold. And the reason why it's so weird is because him and his dad were like the kind of people who were so like obsessed with themselves that they documented like everything in their days on like audio recordings. Mm. So he like murdered his family and stuff and a a normal person, you know, didn't feel so self-important. They wouldn't write down all their thoughts about why they're so amazing and why their wife deserves to die. Well, but this guy and his dad both are like, so obsessed with themselves there's all these recordings of them and it's so crazy to hear these guys you know like the kind of you know what i mean like they're just like sociopathic people who you know sociopathic people they have kind of like visions of grandeur and they they think that they're like so intelligent right you're like you're dumbass you're stupid you know that oh boy man it's it's really good i like that kind of stuff a lot and then i love uh rupaul's drag race Right, not and that. Beyonce. Those are the those are the three things I'm really into. Beyonce, Beyonce, RuPaul's drag, like drag in general, but specifically if we're gonna go like fandom thing, like mm, yeah, the show RuPaul's Drag Race oh. and through through crime podcasts and um, Kitchen Nightmares starring Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> what a. Uh... So I remember when we were on tour together, I remember where you, we all, you know, we all used to talk about Game of Thrones and stuff. Uh, how did you feel about that last season? I have watched about three full hour long um, video essays on game, this ending of Game of Thrones. And I'd say total, I have probably watched about eight hours of people analyzing it. <laughs> right. I, and I really agree. There's one that you might really like. Let me just quickly find her name. I think it's Lindsay Ellis is her name. Yeah, Lindsay Ellis. If She's a really – she's a YouTuber that does a lot of, like, long-form videos on movies, analyzing movies and that kind of stuff. Um, and she did – she did one called like the last game of Thrones hot takes. And it's like an hour and a half long. I just watched it a couple days ago and it's, it sums up everything I feel about it where I just feel like you can't take a change in your plot that you decide and ignore all character development and then turn it around and be like, you guys never saw it coming. Uh Because to me, it's like, well, we never saw it coming because that doesn't make sense for that character. That's why we never saw it coming because you didn't write the character to do that. And then you just wanted to like leave and make star Wars. So you wrapped it all. <laughs> so like, you, did, so you personally didn't think that the Daenerys twist was like, could ever happen uh, the way the story was going. I watched, I, I, there were so many people after the show was done and like on like Reddit and stuff that were all trying to like make sense of it and, and reference old stuff. Well, you know, in season two, what does she say? I'll have this by fire and blood and blah, blah, blah. And in season four, she says, Oh, burn the, burn them all, blah, blah, blah. And that I was into that. Mm -hmm. But Lindsay, Lindsay Ellis, she swayed me back to being like, (laughs) no, that. Was bad. It was not good writing, and it's and it's um, I I 
personally wouldn't have had the show end the way it did. But I think it's so ridiculous. The people that are so upset over it. Right. Um, to like sign a, you know, a, a thing. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's like, it, that's the most ridiculous part uh, to me is like, <clears throat> like, yeah. listen, it's, it's, it's cool to be upset. Like you could be upset. Like, yeah, sure. You've invested a lot of time and you probably have your own theories about what was going to happen. And yeah. you know, it's something you generally love, you know, whatever, but it's also not yours to choose where it goes yeah. or what's going to happen. So and it's, it's like, not yours to choose how long all these people are a part of this show. Like right. it's need to move on. Obviously right. it's time for them to move on mm-hmm. and everyone needs to just move on. And, it, and, and there's that haven't come out that, that can be <laughs> completely different. If, right. if you know, like, they can suck it. They can suck my ass. <laughs> That's what, right. uh, you know, like, like for me personally, it's like, it's like, look, I, I understand where lots of these plots were going. Like to me, if I just like watched the ending, you know, out of nowhere, like say I say I wasn't paying attention to Game of Thrones for a long time, and I see me ending. I watch the end without seeing it. <laughs> but 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 I would but I would be like, I would be like, oh, this is pretty good ending. But then once you fill me in on the rest of it, I'd be like, well, it seems like there was some chapters missing or something. You know what I mean? Like that's the only like it's like I could see all these characters getting to this point, but the journey we might have left some stuff out. You know what I mean? Like and that's. Yeah. And also, I just felt it was wrapped up too quickly. It needed, that needed to be like two seasons. Right. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I watch a lot of videos about that. Like one of the most interesting things that someone said on their little, uh, you know, YouTube thing was like, was like, if we got a world where like Danny burned everyone and then Jon Snow like had to just like sit by her side and then we watched her rule for like half a season to where everyone's like, let's see what she does now. Let's see what she does now. And then we, and then we kill her. Jon Snow makes the decision. It definitely would have had more of an effect on the way we all feel. You know what I mean? Like instead we just were like, she's bad. I got to kill her. (laughs) And it's like, it's it's done. And I don't, and I don't, everything, every character in that show at, on that last season like all of Danny's team, Tyrion and right, you know, what's his name, bald guy, uh, Barry, yeah. and 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 uh, John. Like they all just like Tyrion. I you just like watch like he, he he's written so well in like seasons one through three, four, and then it's like you can just tell you can just watch. It's like here's when the books they stop being able to follow the books, right, and here. <laughs> It went like that, but I still enjoyed watching the show. I think it's so weird to be so mad about that that you're, that people are like and all, and all mad. Like, yeah, especially when they're like, I know that you guys, you know, went out of the country for years at a time to film these, stay away from your family, and you're probably exhausted. Oh. But fuck you, you redo it. And it's like Jesus, yeah. what is wrong with people? <laughs> I know. I I really love. There was like a George R. R. Martin quote that was just like, you know, as as fans of of writing, you don't get to pick where everything goes. Like the it's storytellers, like it's yeah. Fans changed. It's like they're all art, or a man that an artist started a different style. It's like they're artists. You yeah. can choose to watch it or listen to it or look at it or not. Right. They're not making it for you. Right. And like, not a and circumstance is always going to be a situation, especially like I, I come from a, I mean, I'm not hugely older than you, but I am a little bit older than you. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, you know, I come from a time where like, you know, whenever I, you know, started going to see movies when I was a kid. And then, you know, I eventually would like gotten to like middle school and like, you know, high school and stuff. Like I lived in an, in a time where it's like somebody, somebody could give me like part one of a movie and it's like, here's a movie. And then it's like, I heard this is the part one of like a fucking five or six, you know, book story. And then part one doesn't do very well. So they never make another movie. Yeah. So, so it's like, I come from an age where it was like common to get like part one of something and never see anything else ever again. And then you're just like, part one was awesome. Loved it. 
And that's what we have to live by. I'm still mad that they didn't do any more of the girl with the dragon tattoo movies. Uh, didn't they do a part two? I think they no. just did a part two like last year, like the, the not, American version or whatever. It's not like the, the, the other books. Oh, it's really? like, it's, it's like, um, it is part of the universe. <laughs> right. Okay. It isn't the story of the girl, that girl who has a dragon tattoo mm-hmm. and Daniel Craig and Rooney Mara getting down. Right. It's just, it's like, in within that universe but it's that david fincher directed that and i thought it was so good but it didn't do well apparently because it was like a horrendous tragic like heavy movie and it came out during christmas and (laughs) you don't want to like green light another one because all those people were all busy being like james bond and shit yeah but it's so, so that kind of thing bums me out. So it's like, yeah, eventually you might not like the thing anymore. It keeps going and going. Yeah. I mean, one example of like how, you know, back in the day, how crazy the politics of like putting together a story in a movie or whatever. It was like, we got interview with a vampire. Right. And it was like, awesome. Right. But that's, you know, that's that. what, what part is that in the Anne Rice books? That's like part three or something. Right. Yeah. And then and then we're like, okay, so we just got a movie that was part three of a series. And we're like, okay. And then, you know, some years down the road, they're like, Queen of the Damned. And we're like, okay, I guess we're getting a Queen of the Damned movie. And that's like part five of the story or something. And then it's like made by a different movie company. And there's like a bunch of different actors. Yeah, I, don't even, <laughs> I don't even think of those as all being connected because right. like all the – anything that's been – like adapted from Anne Rice it's like it it all is like in a completely different world but I also haven't read all of her books right so I don't so I don't know if maybe there's more that connects them but to me it seems like they all really take place in completely different universes there's so much stuff in Interview with the Vampire that like I still think about like at least once a week that disturbed me (laughs) like what and I haven't and I saw it like 15 years ago um, okay, number one, when Brad Pitt eats those dogs, <laughs> he's really hungry and he eats this lady's dogs. Right, I, I remember that. That was that was. That bummed me out. Um, and then also, there's like, I think there's a part where there's like a lady and she's like feeling all good and sexy, and then she like looks down and like Tom Cruise or or Brad, someone is just like just sucking on her boob, but it's like he's like. Oh, he like bit he's, into her booby and like yeah. she was like, and also, like you know, like she didn't feel it, like she was feeling good. Yeah. And then she hands out, and she looks down and sees that, and is like horrified. That bothered me. Right. Um, spoiler alert to the twenty year old. <laughs> and then what else? Oh, and then so I think about that like once a week. I think about the dogs once a week, and I think about um, the famous, you know, Kirsten Dunst. Dunst, yeah. When she. <laughs> When she and the other lady are like in that pit, and the the sun comes and it turns them into dust, that really bothered me. Yeah. So those things, was... every, like once a week, I think about those three things. I'll... Also, Tom Cruise's horrible wig. <laughs> I think about that a lot too. I honestly was thinking about this the other day. Like Kirsten Dunst's most grown up role was that one when she was a kid. Was like... Yeah. <laughs> So I was like, I was like, she was good in all the other movies she's done, but like she was amazing in Interview with the Vampire. Did you see her in the newer season of Fargo? Mm-mm. You'd like that show. Oh. It's really good. And Kristen, Kirsten Dunst is like this little like beautician lady who's just like, oh, yeah. Oh, don't you? I don't want to run to her. It's like that. She's like that kind of person. I like ones that kind of put the format, like turn the format upside down. Right. That's why I like... Um, one Punch Man for anime. <laughs> See, I've that? never actually watched that. I've heard so many people tell me to the watch it. The whole thing is just making fun of anime. Really? It's so funny. And just like, it, the whole thing is just so, like, and it's also really well done. Mm. It has really amazing animation. And it's really funny for other reasons too, but they just, they're, they like break the fourth wall so much. And like, just, it's like the whole thing is like winking at how like over the top anime is and like mm. the cliche stories and that each 
you know, all anime has. And so they just always are like nodding at that and like, you know, winking at that. It's really funny. Right. It's very self-aware. So do you miss being on tour, Courtney? Oh my God. So bad. Like when we, Michael, when we got home from work, like we just were like, give her one of those days when you just want to like, you're six hours into your shift and you just want to walk out and like, everyone to get fucked and just never return oh, oh 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 man like i was gonna tell you earlier like you know you said you were like i love talking shit you know like well like <clears throat> whenever the the band worst intentions put out our ep we had some you know we had some r- random friends from the area that wanted to do stuff like you know media stuff and like one of them was a podcast and they're like yeah come on the show we'll, we'll talk about stuff and like once we finished, you know, the podcast and they sent us, you know, the version they were going to put online, they're like, yeah, promote this, blah, blah, blah. Once I listened to it, I was like, I'm definitely not going to share this with anyone. And, I, oh and, 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 you know, whenever I told other people that they're like, why, why wouldn't you share that? And I'm like, well, because I talked a lot of shit about my work <laughs> like i was like because i'm a you know I, I was a dealer yeah and, and like they would ask you know like what do you guys do in the meantime when you're doing the band stuff so i was like well i uh i pretty much cater to rich people and let them yell at me as i take their money you know what i mean like yeah so it was just like oh. and it got real it got real like it got real mean to where I was like, fucking rich people could suck my ass. <laughs> I spit in their fucking drinks and I fart on their jack, their blackjack cards. Oh my God. I think that, like, I think that it's like your environment and then also having a goal that you're working towards makes things a little bit better. Like for instance, like we just booked our tickets to go down and record some songs uh, in LA in like three weeks Mm -hmm. just figured it out and we're going down there and that makes me feel more now i have a thing that i'm counting down towards so i feel more like productive and like i'm less sad at work because i'm like okay well i'm about to like keep working towards my goal and i'm gonna like this i'm gonna take my stuff that i'm working on to the next level but like when i don't have that to look forward to like a, a thing that's going to, in my mind, help my music career. It, it just like, we just feel like we're like doggy paddling, like, like or treading water. Right. Like I, I always, I don't know. I need, I mean, people like us need a project to work on, you know what I mean? And that's, it helps us not kill ourselves, but yeah, I'm <laughs> so depressed. And like my worst nightmare is like, finding some nine to five job that I'm successful at and like (laughs) going to college and like becoming a, what would I be like a a dental hygienist? (laughs) No, like not anything against doing that job because it's like a job that's really helping people. Right. Um, it's just me like the, the, the monotony of like feeling like I'm around people that don't understand me. Like Mm -hmm. that's, I think the thing that makes me feel really bad is that I'm often, I'm around people that don't, they, I don't mean that like, they don't understand me, I'm an artist. I mean like, I just mean like it. They don't vibe. It doesn't make, yeah, like they, it just makes me feel like you can get, you can get in your own head and you're like, you aren't shit. These <laughs> people don't think you're cool. No one thinks you're cool. At the, at the, at the same time, it would it would be, a blessing as well to in the next couple of years, find something else that I'm good at mm-hmm. and then apply myself to that. But I just don't see that happening. I'm not good at anything else and it doesn't <laughs> fulfill me any way other than I mean, writing anyway. songs and performing them. Like that's the thing I like. I mean, you know, I, all my whole life was music for a long time, but like whenever all that ended, I was like, I found a bunch of other stuff I like to do. And, and honestly, like part of it was like, especially like this, like doing the podcast and stuff is like fun and cathartic to me because it's a project that I'm in charge of and I could do whatever I want with. I don't have like four other dudes being like, you know what you should do? You know, you should do, you know, you should do. And like, and that's the most, the most common thing that, that anyone could ever say to you when you have your own project, whether you have your own project and it's like a band or you're like writing stories or something like 
everybody, the first thing they want to say is like, you know what you should do? You know what I think you should do? And it's like, I don't care what you want me to do. Like, I'm doing this for myself. You know what I mean? Like, doing this to myself. If someone wants to pay me for it, great. Otherwise, right. I'll just continue to do it. It's like the main, so- the main point of what we, people like us want to do is like, have our own ideas, have our own, you know, like hobbies and get, you know, somehow turn it into a career for ourselves, like being ourselves, doing what we want and turning it into a career. You know what I mean? Like opposed to kneeling before the man and fucking taking one in the mouth. (laughs) But yeah. And I think it's possible. It's possible as long as you want it. I, you know what I mean? There was a point in time where I thought the band thing was impossible and it happened. And it just so happens that that was the wrong thing to get into, I guess. (laughs) I think, I think that, um, it's just one of those weird things where I'm just gonna, I I can't stop. We like Michael and I can't stop doing it. We love, we just want our band to work so bad, but at the same time, it's different when you've like, when you have lived a lifestyle where no one other than yourselves is depending on you. Mm -hmm. Obviously if I, if we had kids, I wouldn't be doing this at all. That'd be so selfish. I'd be like. I would be, you know, we would just be doing it for fun every once in a while. But like, you know, the only people that rely on us are, I re- I only rely on myself and Michael mm-hmm. and he relies on himself and me. So I think we have like a couple more years of trying really hard. Right. I'm, yeah. And, because. And you, you guys honestly have come a long way for what you've done and the, the amount of time that you've been doing it. You know what I mean? Hard. <laughs> and I'm awfully proud of you. Aw, thank you. <laughs> I hope that it, one of these days, like I, I just hope that we can tour soon, and I, it would just be so satisfying to me to come to your town and for you to get to watch us and like see you out there and be like, "Good job, guys!" <laughs> and also, you'd be honest to us if you thought we sucked, you'd be like, "Uh, that was a little." Because think about that. Think about how weird that is. Like we've both never seen each other perform. I know. I've never gotten to see you perform. Right. And you've gotten to see me perform. Right. We're always together on stage. <laughs> when I would love to be so fun if we ever came and did a show. If we ever come through. How was it? Uh, how was it playing the first time that you guys got a, a drummer and a and a bass player in there and start jamming? How did that feel? Like, just not the shows, but just, like, jamming in the... Just jamming like, it in general. Well, well, we finally got a guy that could play through the drums. Like, <laughs> you know, he was, like, afterwards, after, like, we did... I forget what song we did first, but after we got through the song, he was like, yeah, sorry, guys, like, that was a little a little shaky, but I'm a little nervous, blah, blah, blah. He had just, like, flown in... He doesn't live here. He lives a little, like, a couple hours away. So he flew in, um, and he did it, and he was, seemed a little bit like, oh, my God, like, he just met all of us. And me and Michael were just like, oh, my God, are you kidding us? And Bill, our bass player, we were like, we've never gone to play the song before and actually get through the whole song. This was amazing. <laughs> like, yeah. I can play right now. Because, like, there's songs that we had written, like, two years ago, but right. we've never been able to actually, like, start from the beginning of the song and get with a drummer all the way through the song, <clears throat> you know? Gotcha. So I, I, it was really, it was really cool. So, um, now, and now of course that's all worn off and we're back to all being our like ridiculous selves. feeling like everything's perfect. <laughs> and we're all, <laughs> but, but, um, to be honest though, like dude, playing our first show, we were just opening a small show on a Tuesday night. Mm. I was more, nervous for that than any Iwabo show I've ever done. Yeah. I mean, after you haven't done it for a long time, it's just so fucking scary to do it again. <laughs> when you first did a sh- shows like with worse intentions. Yeah. That's what I felt too with them. And like, and you know, like there's like, I was telling young Michael, like I, I forget that some of those guys didn't play professionally for like, years and fired. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah so i would so i would be like oh man oh man um, oh we're not tight we're not as tight as i would expect and like stuff well like just that, the but. little things too it's like it's like you know 
setting up your gear on setting up your gear and taking your gear down like that right. kind of stuff. yeah it's like different like, feels... are you all saying hi to your families right now <laughs> yeah. we're gonna get off the stage shit <laughs> i love that's that's like the one thing that i always i i feel confident in that we'll we're all good at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but like, I was so nervous and it, it took me a couple songs. Like after a couple songs, I was like back in my element. Um, but you know me, like when have you ever seen me drink a bunch before a show? Right. When yeah. seriously, like think back. I never. Do you think I ever, I think I like, I drank sometimes. Yeah. Like later, like after hours after <laughs> whiskey, oh, yeah. but that show, uh, and the, sh the the other two shows I did too um, with Misery Signals, I was so fucking nervous. I had like I just was like, I need fireball shots now, and I just like, <laughs> my stepdad just kept buying me shots of fireball before nice. I went on, and I was just like, Ugh. by the time I went on, I was like shaking seriously. Like, right. Ah. Yeah. Oh. And you know what was really funny too? We. So, you know, they wanted us to go up a little higher on the bill because they're like, oh, you know, it's their first show. Maybe we can get some people to come. Um, and uh, we were like, no, no. We want to open because we want to have a sound check because we've never done a show before. Right. And so everyone thought we were so weird for wanting to open the show, but we w definitely wanted to do it. But things really went late, and I should have known – that soundcheck would run late for the other band, um, of course. And it was so funny because we did the most shot thing. Like they're like, we have to open the doors now, and we we're like, no, 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 we're having a sound check. They're like, well, we have, we're opening the doors. I'm like, you can open the doors, but I'm doing a sound check because we need <laughs> yeah. to make right. So, like <laughs> we still did a sound check as people were walking in. I mean, we've all done it, you know. It just and I was and I was just kind of like. Uh, and then I just joked and was like, well, uh, that, that was it. That was the show. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, but, uh, like, I, so that made me feel a little bit better. But I was so nervous. Like, oh, Jesus Christ. I don't think next time I play I'll feel like that. But I think I, you know, we don't play it ever. So each thing I do, I put it on such a high pedestal. Right. Like, you know, the show I told you we might do in December. I've been thinking about, like, what outfit I'm going to wear for that. <laughs> for, like, a couple of months. But, you know, whereas in, back in the olden days, we would just be like, yeah, whatever, I'll just fucking roll in bed. It's yeah. fine. I'll wear my piss shirt. It's fine. Yeah. And, my, my, oh. and young Michael will wear his mustard shoes, must, mustard stained shoes. Mustard. Mikey put. Oh, you know what? <laughs> so, like cup holder. Yeah, that's what. Uh, okay, so young Michael one time was just like, he, he's like, after a long night of travel, <laughs> he's like, wait a minute. Why is there mustard on my white vans? And then like, we like, he's like, who, who, who was eating mustard? And then Mikey is like, uh, well, I had a corn dog last night. <laughs> he's like, God damn it. Why? You know, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's so funny is like, you know, I talked to the Miss May I guys and like they, you know, we kind of we did the same thing. Like we talked about nerdy stuff. We talked about the band, but then, you know, you talk about band stories no matter what. And it was just like, oh he God. was, he was talking about pee bottles. And I was like, I was like, Oh, you had a pee bottle guy too. <laughs> Ours was Mikey. <laughs> and they were oh, like, they were like, they, they literally were like, there's a special place in hell for people that leave their pee bottles in the van. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. You remember do you remember when I think we were in Texas or something and it was Michael's, maybe it was his first tour with us. Maybe. And do you remember when he was just like so tired and he was having a bad night and like he had to go like park the van and trailer by himself uh -huh. and then he couldn't do it. And then someone was helping, maybe you were helping him and he said, I'll get out. I'll get out and I'll like direct the, uh -huh. go this way, go and then like when he got out a pee bottle rolled out of the car out of the van to the curb and then as you were backing up 
the tire rolled over the pee bottle and <laughs> pressed it against the curb and it exploded everywhere. <laughs> and Michael looked down and like some droplets were like an inch from his foot. And he was like, Courtney, if a drop of that fucking piss had touched my foot, I would have gone home. He was like, I was straight up you all late. I quit and no, just would have left. Man. Like thumbs us up. I feel like, like I feel like for like all of the uh for all of the disgusting things we were just used to, Michael stepped into that world. I mean you stepped into it too, but sooner than him and when he stepped in he was like Why? No, this isn't what this isn't how it is, god damn it. Like this is No, not- because he was like, because I stepped into that world, but I was already a gross trash person. <laughs> hygienic person so he would be like like what do you mean you all just don't take showers because you're tired like right. even though there's a shower in the venue <laughs> yeah. like oh yeah. we're tired it's a, I, it's I, a miss, I miss you i miss you so much but i do not miss the stench of your stage clothes <laughs> never i have never smelled anything else in my entire life that was like that listen the thing is it's like I, it was i had to I had to. I had to do stage clothes, and it collected all of my smell, and that saved me from losing and destroying so many pairs of jeans and so many shirts that it was unreal. Look, Rick, look, Rick. <laughs> Lovely with you. Right. I understand, and here's why I understand. I can identify with your troubles because I my my version of that is I have a lot of hair, and I'm always shedding. And no matter what I do, no matter how hard I try to keep my hair in a ponytail and brush it all the time, I get hair all over everyone's house, all in their sink, all on the floor. Yeah. And everyone is always frustrated with me at it. And I'm like, <laughs> look, there's nothing I can do. Right. All I can try to do is minimize the damage as much as I can. <laughs> this hair is coming out, baby. Right coming out I mean, so I, at least you don't got a beard or like a bush or you know what i mean like that you just leave trails of everywhere in the sinks knows, and in the <laughs> knows what the for. i don't know. but like it's so annoying look if i do this i guarantee uh, only one hair came out just now but normally like a giant cluster will come out right and it's embarrassing so it's like i feel like that's the similar thing of your stage clothes where you're like look there's nothing I can do about this. Right. It's a stink either way. Like, I'm not going to ruin every shirt I own because if I play one show in a shirt, it might be done. You never know. You so, so, I, so I keep all the damage at one. At one That's pair. a good story for your podcast is when we were in Australia and we lit your pants on fire. Yes. I, and then we didn't buy you new pants. Yeah. As... In Australia, my show clothes were so rank, apparently. I mean, I thought they were, like, bad. But everybody else was like, no, you're burning them. Not <laughs> that, dude. <laughs> and I was like, fine, but it's going to smell bad. <laughs> no, you were like, fine, but, like, we don't have a lot of money. Yeah. Are you guys going to buy me a new pair of jeans and roll? <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> We're probably going to buy you a new pair. And you're like, so you're saying if I burn these jeans yeah. and we have a ceremony burning them, you're going to give me money, right? It's kind of like yeah. the same thing with your with your suitcase, remember? Right. We left your suitcase in yeah. Australia. We're like, we'll buy you a new one. And then we just never did. Yeah, well, it seemed to be a reoccurring thing. <sighs> okay, fine. You, don't, I'll just... <laughs> you have pants. You have some tasteful sweats. You're fine. Just wear some wear some nice jean shorts on stage. Jorts. We'll take you to the goodwill. You wear I mean, some jorts. You, I mean, you've seen me wear those on stage too. Some jorts. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I sure have. But that, yeah, that you you stinking Mikey's pee bottles. <laughs> um, what did Michael always do? That we make fun of. I, I was making fun of Michael was just as making fun of him for just wanting to do normal human stuff like taking a shower. He'd be like, <laughs> I really need to take a shower. I'd be like, hey, you're lame. Ooh, you need to take a shower? We're all out we're all out here playing dice and watching reality television. I'm, I'm taking a shower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can want to practice good hygiene. <laughs> oh, the the one uh the one thing that I remember Mikey always do or young Michael doing was like Energon, 
Courtney, I need inner John. Inner John every day. Inner John. Does he still you say know what? Yeah, but a couple months or a month ago or so, I gave him some of my coffee and he was like into it. And uh, he went he two weeks straight. He drank the same really good like um, it was like this salted caramel sweet cream like cold brew coffee. Mm. And he was really big time into it. Nice. Um, nice. It was it made me feel really good because then like I could be like let's go for a coffee. And <laughs> Courtney, it's been amazing talking. Uh, we should we should probably do this every so often at least. Whether, sure. Whether we record it or not, but you know, content is content. You can, always, you can always record it, and then if I say anything funny, you can put it on there. I don't care. Right, right. I that mean, way, you, that way, I, you have collateral against me. You can <laughs> <see>. <laughs> yeah. Well, me and Courtney have this new thing where we just record us talking shit about everything we hate in life. And then, you know, we hold it over each other's heads later on. <laughs> <laughs> but all right. Uh, Spirit Box. Everybody check it out. They've got an EP, a couple of EPs now, right? Yeah, we're making new music now again. I don't know what it's going to be like, but I better figure that out in the next three weeks. <laughs> all right. Well... And I'll send you whatever I end up working on, like when I have stuff in, created. Tight. Can't wait to hear it. But don't tell me if it's bad. Just <laughs> say. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I doubt it'll be bad. So. It'll at least be seven out of ten. All right. Well, Courtney. Well, I hope I talk to you sooner than later. Okay. See you later. See you later, nerds. Bye. 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 Hey, look at me. Don't look at him anymore. You need to you need to hit the like button. It's for the algorithm, okay? And you have to click the little, sub that one, the subscribe button. Yeah. I don't know what side of the screen, <laughs> I don't know if you have the screen, but I don't know, okay? <laughs> and then while you're at it, don't just go back to whatever you were doing. You're here for a reason. Maybe Ricky will be cool and he'll put a little recommended video here and here on the side. Do you know how to do that, bud? That? Yeah. You I guys think. want to see how you want to see Ricky talk about Mortal Kombat? Click here. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky talk to the amazing, talented, and handsome singer of Miss May I? Click here. <laughs> <laughs>